This episode of TechZilla is brought to you by T-Mobile and the Samsung Galaxy S3. Time to get our AC Nation on. Jim's got a question about dynamic compression. He says, Patrick and Robert, great show. Thank you. I learned a lot by watching. He says, I have Insignia HDTV, a Denon AVR, best money I ever spent, and for the time being, just stereo output. I download your show through my TiVo. My question has to do with audio, specifically volume, dynamic range, the range of volume level from the lowest audio level to the highest. The latest seasons of HBO's Game of Thrones illustrate this very well, but it's the case for almost all movies, TV dramas, etc., where there are low level of dialogue volume, punctuated by a quick edit to a battle scene, for example, where the volume level is so loud, I frantically grab around for the remote to turn the volume down. Who can relate to this situation All with a four-year-old to sleep on the other side of the home theater? Then when the explosions stop and it returns to the conversation, I have to grab the remote again to turn the volume up so I can hear the actors. This constant up and down and back and forth can be incredibly distracting. Can you suggest a reasonable solution to this? Having some experience with audio recording, I know that in a studio environment, an audio engineer would run the signal through a compressor and or limiter, something like the Elisa 3630. Is there any kind of comparable black box that is suited for home TV viewing? Thanks, Jim. By the way, he says, any show info about mobile TV being able to get HDTV signals into your car for long commutes to and from work would be awesome. We'll talk about mobile HDTV later, and yeah. I'm going to say, you have to promise me you're not going to be doing that while you drive, otherwise I'm not going to give you the information. I've actually seen people put portable televisions up on the dashboard of their car on i5. That's I cool, 5. man. No. Do no, it. it's not cool. Do it. It's not cool at Do all. It. Well, you're the law. You're right. not the law. <laughs> I feel like I run over in any case. Yeah, exactly. What you want is compression. So you're in a theater, right? And the theater has like 42 speakers around an audience of like 400 people, and the 400 people are breathing and making noises, and that kid in the front's breaking up with his girlfriend on the cell phone, so the volume's a little <laughs> louder than you might have it at home anyway, right? And they want dialogue. They basically, they punctuate the movie by slamming that volume. They have a reasonable, reasonable volume for the conversations between two individuals. Robert, are you feeling reasonable today? And then guns go off, and it's huge, <laughs> and they want your neck to snap back, and that's basically what is happening on the Blu-ray you're playing in your house or on you know the movies you've downloaded it's on your It's also that that audio track was designed for a speaker setup that is like the theater. Right. So it has speakers to handle the low sounds, the mid-range, and the high end as well. So that's one reason it doesn't sound the same, but what you're dealing with really, I think, is more about the, the dynamic range compression, or on average, most of your movies on TV are being basically delivered. The audio is being delivered right. in Dolby Digital. And one of the issues with Dolby Digital is that they can incorporate, uh, basically, they can, they can take it from the five-channel soundtrack and make it a two-channel soundtrack if you want. Uh, that, that information is still in there. And what's nice about doing that is that usually if you can, if you can then switch it to two-channel output, you're going to get basically a compression of that sound, the high and low sounds that you're currently fighting with the remote control. Right. Into, into that stereo channel that you're currently be able to take advantage of. Now, I would hope that your AVR is able to do this for you if you, you have it set up properly. Yeah, and most of the, some of the, basically, if you go to the bottom of the line models, you probably don't have it. Hopefully, you've got one of the Denon mounts that has Odyssey Multi EQ built in, because it, it will also have something called Odyssey Dynamic Volume. Oh, that would help. And what that does basically, it's, you know, the feature adjusts the output volume to the optimal level while constantly monitoring the level of the audio input to the unit. So basically, what it does is you set it to the level you want, and it basically makes everything sound at that level. They have like, on mine it's got this crazy setting where it's like midnight, so it, it keeps everything super soft. Totally. And, then, and you can set it sort of daytime and then it has sort of a normal. That's a great switch too if you're trying to not offend your neighbors late at night with the bass track. Say, yeah. say the rumble and the screams and to be able to squeeze it down into a range where it puts it all into, I guess, closer to where the voices are in the yeah. soundtrack. So, so you're not dealing with loud sweeps and volume changes and that's, that's really the key to it. But, Check for the settings, things like dynamic range mm -hmm. compression, number one. That will help squeeze that, that, that very dynamic audio track into something a little more listenable in your current speaker setup. Likewise, though, if you have a 5.1 yeah. setup, and if it's set up right, you should be able to take full advantage of that soundtrack and really appreciate the dynamic range that it does offer. Since you have the Denon amp, what you want to look for is hopefully you've got the Odyssey built in there, which, which is down to almost the least expensive amps they make. And what you're looking for is dynamic Curious volume, folks. midnight, most adjustment to loudest and softest <laughs> sounds, evening, medium adjustment to loudest and softest sounds, there and day, least adjustment to loudest and softest sounds uh, off. Do not use dynamic volume in this case. Yep. <laughs> I use midnight for the You want parents. dynamic volume on, and yes. <laughs> Use the midnight. <laughs> when I'm by myself, turn that stuff off. Or if I'm not trying to mess with my neighbors at least, so.
If, by the way, if you have a Denon amplifier and you find some of the, the terminology or marketing stuff inside of there confusing, check out Bat Pig's Denon to English Dictionary Setup Guide and it's fact. Ah, that's awesome. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. <laughs> Basically, it gives you a link to like all the sort of facts that are available for Odyssey and stuff. Because some of the stuff like, you know what I mean, if I'm looking for like dynamic range compression, I'm probably not sitting there going like, gosh, yeah, I probably... need dynamic volume set to midnight. That if... may not be the most intuitive thing to you. Yeah. The, so. or, or the labeling just might be completely different across product lines because every marketer wants to have their a little yeah. fingerprint on what it says or does. I hate that. Yeah. Clifton. Clifton, he wrote in, he says, Bass Trap, what is it and how can it improve a home theater setup? Well, well, okay. What so should we tell Clifton? Uh, one, you better have a complicated room and a lot of money and a lot of time. Because a bass trap is essentially, you know, according to Wikipedia, acoustic energy absorbers, which are designed to damp low frequency sound energy with the goal of attaining a flatter low frequency room response oh, by reducing low frequency resonances in rooms. So, um, a typical sort of uh, bass trap or room tuning device. And this stuff, this is pretty advanced geeky stuff. Like if I go to room tune, I think I want to say that stopping low notes is much harder. Yes, than stopping high frequency, like reflections off of a wall, particularly uh, like if you walked around a blank room, uh, blank walls, and you slap your hands pretty hard, you should be able to hear a really solid reflection coming off the wall, whereas if you have good, good basically sound absorption or, or mitigation on the walls, you can then slap your hand, you won't hear that harsh reflection so much. And that's one of the things, but what we're trying to do is stop low frequencies, bass notes in particular, which require much longer wavelengths. Right. So in order to stop that wave, you need very deep structures to do that. And if you've ever been in an anechoic chamber, which if you've never, go find one and go, go stand one. in one for a few minutes. Uh, the, the bass traps in those rooms typically are on the order of a meter thick. I mean, yeah. uh, they're, they're just these huge pieces of geometry that are designed to grab those very long wavelengths and stop them or, or attenuate them in such a way to, to prevent Here whatever what the desired effect is for the room you're trying to here's, manipulate. Here's, a, here's like a whole page of them. So if you look at it, these are the assembled versions of them right here. Oh. And if you're wondering what's okay. inside of that, thank and you. And I slides. imagine those would be hung on the wall or yes. in, in, embedded into the wall. What they would look like is something like, uh, here it is. They don't look pretty, but you can paint over that stuff. Well, essentially, <laughs> the, it's basically, it's, it's a big space where you have, you know, basically foam inside of it to capture it. And, and this, is, this would be something you would do in concert with something like room tunes. This is a big pile of used ones where they're essentially crazy, well, that, that's really not big enough. Um, they're essentially crazy foam blocks, uh, you know. I, I, I don't want to insult anybody by, by not treating them like sophisticated acoustic tuning environments, but uh -huh. essentially they're super cool pillows you bury in the corners of your room to eliminate standing waves. Done, done and, right, and, though. The audio engineers I've worked with in the past, uh, it done right, though. And if, you can, if you can tune the room to be as neutral as possible, that's a nice place to start on a high-end home theater. Yeah. For most of us, though, we're usually dealing with it from the other end. Uh, you're dealing with however the room looks, and then you're just tuning the speakers accordingly right. to get them to sound the way you want. And that's where technologies like multi-EQ from right. Odyssey and others really come into play. I, I would seriously think, like, before you buy money in a bass trap, you know, use your multi-EQ setup, use your audio tuning inside of there. Experiment with locations of yeah. the subwoofer in there. Moving a couch, moving a chair, putting a rug on a hardwood floor. These are all things you can do to radically change the acoustic environment for your, for your home theater and make it sound much, much better or much, much worse. Curtains and what you have even hanging on the yes. walls will affect the room and the audio environment as well. So think, Lots think of about softness it. is good. Yeah. Hey, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. We want to thank Samsung Galaxy S3 by T-Mobile for making this episode of Texilla possible. With Comic-Con coming up next week, I'm excited to be able to take photos while I'm recording video. That means I never miss a crazy costume or celebrity. With this massive screen, it's easy to review all the images and video that I've taken. It's crazy simple to use. Once you set up the camera to video mode and begin recording, you'll see the camera icon right above the on-screen record button to the right. Just hit that icon and you'll be taking high-resolution stills while your video recording is uninterrupted. As an added bonus, I know Roger has been drooling over this phone for a while, so I get to make him a little bit jealous. When combined with T-Mobile's 4G network, the Galaxy S3 will let you do things you would have never imagined. In fact, we recorded this entire segment right on the Galaxy S3's camera. Head over to the link below to learn more and maybe even win a phone or other Samsung product in their Spin to Win contest.